Mr. Lok Sang Sangi, you will be the most powerful Prime Minister that Tibet has ever seen in its entire history, in fact. So, how does this responsibility sit on your shoulders? Well, Jyotiji, I don't see it from the perspective of power. Rather, it's a responsibility that the uh, Tibetan people have entrusted in me. And I take it as, a, as an honor and a privilege to serve uh, Tibetan, Tibetan people. And obviously, it's a, it's a hu huge responsibility. And uh, it's, a, it's of Himalayan proportion, but uh, we will start you know, climbing uh, gradually, but steadily, and we'll reach the mountain top. As you were campaigning for this post, because you had campaigned in the Indian-American style, basically going around and meeting people, something which Tibetan leaders had earlier not done. So as you were going around the country, there were a lot many people who said that what they want from you, firstly, is freedom for Tibet. What does that mean? What kind of freedom? How much would that freedom entail? What would it not get? What does that freedom mean? Uh, you're right, actually. I kind of introduced the Indian-American uh, campaigning style by going directly to the people and sharing my ideas. And the overwhelming kind of response from the people was that, you know, uh, I should serve His Holiness the Dalai Lama well and, uh, you know, work for his return to Lhasa and restore freedom in Tibet. Uh, freedom uh, meaning an individual basic freedom, collective freedom, uh, but not necessarily a freedom of a nation or a country. Uh, so that's what we are uh, striving for, so that Tibetan identity and dignity could be restored. So basically, as you said, that what you're striving for is the middle path. In fact, it is meaningful autonomy. What does that auton autonomy mean? What is not being given and what is it that you want? And do you think you're going to get it? On paper, or as per Chinese laws, Many rights are granted to Tibetans. Now, the stated official policy of Tibetan administration is to seek genuine autonomy within China or within the framework of the Chinese constitution, which means we are not seeking independence or we are not challenging sovereignty of China or territorial integrity of China. Rather, genuine autonomy, an administrative structure whereby Tibetans' interests and basic freedom can be addressed. You yourself have moved in terms of your political stance from total independence to now the middle path and to autonomy. How do you see this journey and is it something that all Tibetan youth particularly identify with or is it that they do not identify with it and they actually want complete freedom? How do you kind of see this journey and how do you see this conflict of interest? Well, you know, when you're young, obviously, uh, you join Tibetan Youth Congress and the goal of the Tibetan Youth Congress is to restore independence in Tibet. Now, if you look at all past uh, Kalyan Tripas, or the head of the administration, were also members of Tibetan Youth Congress, and, uh, and they all stand for uh, the genuine autonomy within China. So I, I'm also in a similar position. Now, I do seek uh, uh, to fulfill the stated policy of the Tibetan government, or Tibetan administration, uh, and then, yes, there are disagreements, and because Tibet, some Tibetan youth, uh, they are quite vocal about it, and they seek independence. But then our community is also a democracy, where freedom of speech is allowed, and differences of views are allowed. And I, and I do uh, understand and uh, feel uh, their frustration, a younger generation. But uh, uh, Tibetan administration is more pragmatic, and hence seeks genuine autonomy within China. So is this middle path of seeking genuine autonomy actually some kind of a compromise realizing that China is a formidable opponent? Is this something like the cup being half full rather than considering it half empty? Is this some kind of a compromise or is this now the genuine aspiration of the people? No, it is in a way compromise, rather it is a win-win proposition. So what we are saying to the Chinese government is if Tibetans are granted genuine autonomy where we could preserve our own identity, culture and language. Because at the moment, the photograph of His Holiness the Dalai Lama is banned. If you are caught with one, you could get arrested and put behind bars. Similarly, there are economic uh, discrimination, cultural assimilation, and we think all this ought to end. And as for, this chi as for China, what they can gain out of it is they want to be uh, the superpower. And uh, to be superpower, 
you need moral authority, you need respect from the international community. Only way you can gain is by resolving the issue of Tibet. Otherwise, the Tibet issue, the tragic situation in Tibet, will forever tarnish the image of China.